I'm Sue Rowe, I'm a visual effects supervisor. I did my first degree in traditional animation, so my first job was um, actually paint and trace. Uh, so, I, you know, actually drawing and inking. And then I worked on this little TV show in the UK called Super Ted. I worked for a brilliant animator called Candy Guard, and um, we did some little independent shorts. And she got me to do um, uh, the computerization, uh, the, the, she got me to take the drawn images and uh, take them to the computer, and we did uh, real time playback. And it was like new, and everyone was excited, and I was like, wow, I'm not bad at this tech thing. And I thought, right, this is where my life's going to change. So I went back to school, and I paid myself to do an MA in computer animation, and after that, life changed. And suddenly I found myself in a, in a job where I'm a creative and I'm also technical. In those days you did everything. You did, um, you know, your own roto, your own match moving. Um, I was supposed to do 3D, but then nobody could do the 2D, so then I did the compositing as well. And, you know, you, you, you were your own runner. You used to take the, put it on, the, on a data tape and then take it down to scanning recording. So I had to do everything. It gave you a, a good discipline to do bits of everything. And I think that's probably why I ended up on the visual effects side as a supervisor because I knew how to load a camera with film, which was kind of important in those days. Um, and I had a good understanding of, you know, computer animation, so I ended up going out on sets and uh, getting work that way and, and just being thrust into something, which I, I think is relevant right now because I feel like in 1994 I started at Cinesite, nobody was, it was right at the beginning of the industry. And so I don't think it wasn't a case of, um, I must give Sue a chance, she's a female. Like, nobody else was doing it, so I got thrust out into it. Not that long ago, <laughs> but over five years ago, I, uh, I was on a film set. Really big sequence coming up, and uh, the, the memo came out and said, 7 a.m., stage one, Pinewood Studios, meet me. Mm. So I'm there, I'm there at like, over-prepared. 20 minutes, and I'm standing there. Nobody else is there, and then a few people turn up, and I'm standing in the middle of the stage. It was a snow-covered stage, and a few other people kind of they're standing next to me, and they're all just talking with each other, and nobody's really talking to me. And then at one point, the AD goes, "Hey, love, when's your boss going to get here? Because like we're, we're over time now." And I was like, "Oh, I am the boss." And you know, this poor guy was like, "Oh, all right, okay," and the meeting carried on. So how would I deal with that now? So from that experience, I now walk onto a stage and I go, hey, Sue Rowe Visual Effects, because, you know, we all have our biases and our assumptions about male and female. And I'm quite often um, assumed that I'm a producer because there's more um, female producers. And I say with pride, you know, I'm, I'm the artist. I'm, I'm the one, uh, I'm the one that's going to make the pictures look good. It's a hot topic at the moment, uh, which is great, because the more we talk about it, the more we can air what is going on and the more confident we feel about sharing that with other women and perhaps more importantly with other guys, right? Because if we're the, all just women in the room saying, this is unfair, I don't like this, this is happening, this is great to talk about, but the people that we need to be sharing the information with are our co-workers, our allies at work. Um, and I think, you know, that's, that's the next step for us. Let's get the guys sharing the room with us to, so they're aware in the most palatable way possible because Many of the, most of the guys that we work with are awesome um, and are, are supportive and um, are not these characters that we are all talking about. But when you do come across those characters, how do we deal with that? And let's share that responsibility with, with our male and female colleagues and try and work together. Um, and I definitely look out for that kind of, um, anywhere where I see it, I call it out. And where I see it happening to other people, I'm, I'm even more vocal. Um, sometimes I think it's easier to champion somebody else's problems than it is your own. And uh, I come across it all the time. And what's interesting, I've been doing this over 20 years. The last project I worked on was actually one of the hardest. I came across um, a number of people on a film set who were definitely set in their ways about what a male road role and a female role was. And it was a shocker, like in recent times. Um, and I really had to kind of look in at myself and it knocked my confidence and you know because that kind of constant attrition can can be really dangerous um, because you start questioning yourself. I felt driven to do both. <laughs> driven to have a family, I love my girls and I'm driven in my career and that doesn't always come easy um, because you do have to make some choices sometimes for you know family balanced life. 
Um, I've got a very supportive partner. Um, all those things are good. I suppose what I'm trying to say is, if you want it, don't step back. Have a family if you want a family. Don't have a family if you don't want a family. But, you know, as they say, lean in. Like, make people aware of where, what you want in your next career progression. Talk about it openly. Talk about what you've done openly without, um, you know, nodding to somebody else. Say, well, I couldn't have got there without this person. I couldn't have got there without that. I feel like we just need to own it. Say who we are. Say what we've done. If you like me, I'll get the job. <laughs> uh, if you don't like me, I won't get the job. But let's make it clear about what we've done and own that.